welcome fell folders and we will be covering wet folding in this video and um, something I have never covered before on this channel simply because it never interested me one single bit but after having a private lesson with Sifo um, where he showed his Geisha model before the Origami Fold Fest event and then helping him being the tech leader moderator during his live session teaching that model where he wet folded that um, his design and also with a QX model as well at the convention where he taught his bird where he wet folded and after seeing those two classes that really inspired me to give it a shot it's something I've never done before um, this will be the second time I will ever wet fold um, in my life first time on camera first time I did this crane which is just it's so unique this um, wet fold I never thought I'd love it so much just just after one model it's so cool and um, so we're gonna be folding cranes now the paper now before I start if you have ever wet folded leave any tips and advice in the comments for everyone that is new to this and wants to learn it, especially me as well. Um, I'm a beginner at wet folding so any advice would be fantastic for those that are wanting to know. Um, so yeah, the paper that I'll be using is Archie's watercolour paper. It is 300 GSM so it is pretty thick. Just got some wee scraps so this is, is quite thick paper. And this is the paper Sifo used for his Mass of Geisha, which is super impressive. Um, I got the row of that to the side, I'll show in a minute. I originally bought this as like a, a trial tester set. I, want, I wanted to see how it would react, how it would fold, etc. And then when you wet it. But yeah, it comes in nice little sheets. You can buy this on Amazon. It comes in many... Oh, I think two thicknesses, 300 and 185, or is it one, uh, 180? And um, you've got the fine grain, you get, I think you get three, uh, three grains, fine, smooth and rough, and then you get a hot press as well. I don't know the difference of all of them. Um, I don't know the difference between cold press and hot press, I don't know, but um, stupid question. What does it mean by watercolour paper, if anyone knows? I'm going to assume that it, it will work with watercolour paints, maybe to paint it because that's something I'll definitely need to try and uh, practice and plan it out uh, what type of paint, maybe just acrylic over it because I don't plan to do anything super detailed so even if you have acrylic um, and then you make creases uh, the paint shouldn't crack, maybe so you, you won't see the white through it, again I don't know, that will need some testing but anyway, Archie's watercolour paper is what we were using. And if you're curious, this is what oops. This is what it comes in. Large size scale. That's a massive, it is massive. So this has 113 centimetres by give or take 900. So I plan to cut a massive square of this for Sifo's Geisha and do a, a massive life size one just like what he did because it's absolutely fantastic his fold and I would love to try and somehow in some way recreate it if possible so I need to do a lot of practicing before I get to use this so let's put that to one side now in the video we're just going to be doing what well, I'll be doing uh, folding a crane three times now put this to the side we have one square, two square, and three square. I've got an extra one and a few little scraps if I need them. But basically, we're going to fold the crane three times. The first time, I won't wet the paper whatsoever. I just want to see how it reacts to folding a, a pretty straightforward basic model. For me, because when I was Wet fold and this, I just I want to know why you get these little parts here. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be normal to get them. 
but it's good to test and find out if getting that means too much water, not enough water, too dry whatsoever, uh, creasing too hard. So hopefully I'll get some answers uh, during this video. Um, next, of course we have the water. I do have a spray bottle arriving today, but I can't wait. Um, it's arriving uh, later on in a few hours probably, but I can't wait anyway. So we have a bowl of water and a cloth. And what I noticed, this is a good tip, what I noticed uh, when I folded this, uh, when I wet folded this, I used a cloth and of course wet the paper, but I can see tiny marks coming off the cloth onto the sheet. So definitely buy scraps of uh, uh, cloth or fabric and make sure you never use it for anything else other than this. So you can keep it as clean as possible because we are using white paper and the tiniest uh, pieces of fabric that come off this that aren't white will show up on the paper. Again, you probably could remove them after it dries, just pick them off or use something sticky to uh, get them off. That should work. But yeah, make sure that whatever cloth you're using um, is as clean as possible. And of course, if you're using a spray bottle, then you don't need to worry. But let me just quickly show again, it's a little square. I don't know, but then as this is what it's like beforehand, it bends quite easily, it's flexible, it is pretty thick, um, but when you wet fold it and then, no when you wet it and then let it dry, it's like a brick, it is solid, not even budging. So what that told me was maybe when I do try the full attempt on Seafold's Geisha that I may need to do all of it in one day and um, start to finish because I don't want to leave it and then come back the next day and it's halfway at the base and it's like a brick. Now I don't know if this can be softened when wet again. Again I will do that with one of these tests after they dry. So after this video um, I'll let them dry, I'll film the results as well to see how it, um, to see what happens, what they're like. But I'm curious to see if you can wet this paper when it's already been wet, then dried to see if it gets nice and soft again. So, I'm going to get rid of this. The first one is just folding it normal. So I'm just going to fold the crane and get out of here. Just going to fold the crane. I've cut rough squares. The thing with this paper is it's so thick that it's probably going to be quite difficult to cut an actual square. So what I just had to do was uh, measure and then sort of cut, but I can, I'm off by quite a bit, but it doesn't matter. And it's probably going to be, yeah, a bone folder may be good because it, I can, it's going to be quite hard to crease, but again, I don't know how much you should crease. I'm really curious, I don't think I'll even get the crane finished in this. Yeah, so the second crane I will wet fold it before I start and then uh, collapse the crane. I won't wet it that much, but just enough to make it more pliable. And then the third crane I will wet it a lot more to see if that helps. And then I'll, I'll mark on uh, each crane a number at the end just to try and remember the results. Yeah, that's what this is. Quite hard. Yeah, a bone folder would be nice to crease it. Again, we're already getting these uh, paper separating. So I'm not even applying a lot of pressure. So that maybe tells me that you need the water right away for this. I know that when people say wet fold, you fold like the, the main creases first and then wet. 
though I think with this it may be too difficult. Again, you can get the thickness half of this thickness as well, but every time I check, it's out of stock. So once it is in stock, I will buy that paper as well. Basically the same as this large roll, but half the thickness. Wow, that is. I don't think I'll even get the, the other sinks, the other folds over. And I'm trying to do a reunion with this. Super easy. Reunion from 300 GSM. No one's brave enough to do it. Not even Lopper. Yeah, so I can tell this paper is crying out for uh, water. And you can get this paper on Amazon, that is where I bought mine. I don't think I mentioned that in the video, or, or so far. Just go on Amazon, search water, uh, art cheese watercolour paper, and then a bunch pop up, and then you've got a massive selection to choose from. So this also tells me from fold and dry, I don't think it would be a good idea to make the initial creases before uh, wetting the paper because trying to get a precise folding uh, like this probably won't be easy. Yeah, it would definitely be a nightmare to try and get precise with this, uh, without wetting the paper first. All this time just to fold a cream. Yeah, I don't think. Oh wow, that's thick. That is thick. It's not even a feel. This is going to be a really fun experiment. I'm really looking forward to, to it again easier after this one. The cool thing with this paper is it gets buttery, smooth and soft uh, when you wet the paper. Yeah, so I definitely think that when I fold Seafold's Geisha I'm just going to soak the entire sheet enough to make it pliable and then fold from there. That, this is a nightmare. I'm trying to fold it with, with dry paper. I'm surprised I even got this far. Well, that side's cleaner, so I'll just use this with the head. Well, that's the best I can do, that's, that's the kind of trick. And yeah, it's ripped there as well. So that's not going to. There we go, so the crane from 300 GSM um, dry folded. I don't think that's a good idea to fold dry, so let's try it. Number one, dry. Next, we're going to go for number two. I just dropped the tape off. And we're going to wet fold it. Let's bring my sleeves up so I don't get them wet. Okay, so next one is we're going to wet it just enough to hopefully make it easier. This is basically what I did for the first one. So I'm just going to, maybe I should have got a bigger bowl and get water everywhere. And then I'm just going to basically. Wet it over. Now, this is where it would probably be better to use a spray gun 
because I don't know if you can see, but I've got wee tiny marks all over the paper. So it probably would be better to use a spray bottle, that way you don't have any marks. So yeah, I'm basically going to wet the full sheet. And then I'm going to try and fold it over, yeah, that feels fine. So there we go, we're just going to start folding. I thought I cut these squares pretty good. So I measured them really accurate. And I can I mean, see how easy that was just to make the first uh, initial fold. And it's a lot more flexible and remember that because you've added water, depending on how warm it is where you're folding, um, it will dry up. So don't think that you add water and then it's going to be soft for the rest of the day, I mean, it will dry. And it, you're always able to add more water. Is it worth what, uh, wetting both sides? I've never done both sides before. I think I'll do that for the next one, just to see if that makes any difference. And I, I think it would also be good to to fold, to wet fold in a sauna. I think that's a pretty smart idea. <laughs> fold in a sauna where the paper will be like this, constant. Get me a sauna with a table like this and, and I'll be happy. No need for spray guns or uh, wet damp cloths. Now if you feel it's starting to get a bit dry, just go back over it again. I've not added any more water to this cloth. Um, yeah, to the cloth. Maybe dab it actually, because if I start to do this, I'll be taking parts of the paper off. And then I'll be getting it on the cloth. So maybe just dab it, than scrape it. And it'll be much more handy to have a spray bottle. I just need to go ch -ch and it's, it's all good. So, it's much easier. And you're not, you're not hearing me complain about how thick it is when I'm trying to do this. That's what she said. So it is definitely it's so much more flexible, so much more easier to fold. And I'm really curious to see, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how I'll be able to colour this. Um, see what results I can get and yeah, it's going to take a lot of practice I think. Maybe I'll, I'll try acrylic, just paint acrylic over it and then try that. If I'd have known I could have had some ready as well, so I could do a test with that. And you probably don't want to maybe use something that where the colour runs because if you wet the paper, then it will just it will just run. But that could be a good thing as well. And if you're using the same colour paper or the same colour that runs, then it doesn't really matter. So yeah, already we are here. And it's straightforward so far. I'm just going to add a bit more water. Yeah, I'll, I'll re-soak the cloth. And just squeeze as much excess as possible. And then I'm just going to dab over. So dabbing is definitely much better because you're not destroying the paper by constantly rub rubbing it. I'm definitely thinking that folding in a sauna is a great idea for wet folding. Who's with me on that? I'm going to need, uh, go to the next sauna when it opens up and try this. Okay, so yeah, maybe maybe have a little feel just to see where 
some parts feel dry or not at the moment it all feels nice nice and damp And did you see how easy that was? Just to fold these over, no um, resistance, and basically stays in the position. So much easier. I mean, it's like the thickness just disappears. When you add water, what am I doing? I'm folding it flat first. It's like trying like not. so much more easier, I can, I can get it a lot neater when it's slightly damp again, does the temperature of water affect, affect it as well? if I'm, I'm, I'm using like look warm water, it's not warm, it's not cold, it's like mild would it help if the, wa if the, wa uh, the water was warm? would that make a difference? And that's something that is worth maybe it's maybe worth trying. I see how easier it was to get the head to fold that down, where I really struggled with this one. It's so much easier. And let's see, do we have a rip? No, we don't. Can I pull it down? Yes, I can. Cool thing is with, with wet fold you can wet the paper and give it a really uh, unique pose where it will dry in that position. So there we go. Tray number two, slightly wet. Um, I'll just put number two. I've put crane number two wet, not much, and we'll leave this to dry. Now the final one. Quickly push it to the side. Clean my surface. And um, we are going to really wet the paper much more. Let's see if that makes a difference. So I won't squeeze out as much water as I did. Leave it like that. So there's still quite a bit of weight in here. Yeah, I'll wet both sides as well. And um, no, in fact, I don't know if I should. Yeah, I've got another one there as well. Another sheet. Maybe I could do another one. I don't. I don't think I need to do for, uh, both sides. I'm gonna press down. Enough to cover it all. I think I've got it all, we have a bit more corner. Okay, so let's do this. Do this, do this way. On the smooth side, on the outside. For a change. Because the paper has Two sides, it's got a smooth side, which is this one here, and a slightly rougher side. So it just depends what type of side you want. Right, let's add water on this side as well. So 
we have just wet the other side and it's really, really flimsy. Which may be good as well. Maybe it's good to do that to help make these folds much easier. And I don't need a bone folder. I can definitely uh, tell from the thickness that I can easily crease it. But yeah, it's much more softer and flexible. I don't know if you can add too much water, like what would happen if, it, if that happened. Um, I'll do that with a little test after this to see if that helps, uh, to see what it does, how it reacts. Like I'll soak the piece of paper in the water. Maybe I do even more. Again, I'm not going to squeeze out too much water. Yeah, there's definitely zero resistance whatsoever. I think it's a good idea to keep the folds as soft as possible. To try and not create any uh, resistance. Um, as long as you have it nice and wet, then it should stop the cracking. The really cracks from happening on the, the edges of the, the crease. Definitely, it's much easier. It is so soft, this paper, it's so buttery smooth. But if you do get this paper, um, you'll realise what I'm saying and what, I'm, what I mean if you try this. It's, it's so nice. Zero resistance whatsoever. See how quick it is as well. I'm not going fast, it's just there's no resistance, so it's not putting up any defense to help to stop from that uh, phone. So I've basically kept all the creases nice and soft as much as possible. And the final one, here we go. I can instantly see much better that from the first one, 
we have cracks here and some here we have zero cracks here zero cracks here so that probably tells me that it's better it's, it's maybe better to use more water and keep the creases gentle to try and avoid any hard creases so even though we've made the diagonals gently at the start and they're basically not there if you look at it from a certain angle you can barely see them so even further back you couldn't see them so number three I'm really wet So the first one we did, just a little recap, we did a dry fold which is not recommended whatsoever because it, is, it was a pain to fold. The second one we wet the paper but not that much and we got nice, um, we got less resistance, easier to fold. And the third one we got really wet. Um, and I, personally, I was much better for the folding sequence. Uh, pardon me, and a lot more, a lot more smoother. Pardon me. So yeah, that is basically the end of the video. Um, I'll share the results on Instagram because I need to start this video. Uh, I need to get this video rendered because it's in 4K and it will take a while. I think it's over half an hour. So hopefully, you learned something from this and. Again, if you have any experience, wet phone, leave your tips and tricks in the comments. Let's try and get the comment section as packed as possible with all your ideas and tips and tricks for beginners, which they can use to help practice wet phone and get into it. So that is the first episode of wet phone. I will try and practice on how to go about colouring the paper and then do a tutorial on that. And yeah, yeah we'll go from there. Thank you all for watching everyone and I'll see you all in the next video. I need to go and make this lobster paper now.